Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be discussing science and technology questions which were asked in the mains 2020-21 GS paper 3. All right. So as uh, almost every year, we had three questions from science and technology this year also. One 10 marker and two 15 markers. Total weightage of science and technology was 40 marks in GS paper 3. All right. So these were the questions of science and technology. So the first question was a 10 marker in which they asked about the S-400 air defense system. Okay. So how is the S-400 air defense system technically superior to any other systems uh, presently available in the world? This was the question. 10 marker question. Question number five of GS paper three. So again, um, you know, how will you start this uh, answering this question? You can introduce what is S-400. So S-400 triumph. That is what uh, Russia calls it or NATO calls it, calls it SA-21 growler. So this S-400, yes, S-400 triumph or uh, as NATO calls it SA-21 growler. See. This is, uh, you know, first, how will you start? How will you introduce the question? You introduce the question by writing what is S-400. So this is a mobile surface to air uh, missile defense system belonging to Russia. And it is capable to engage any airborne threat. This can be one line introduction. You can write about S-400 Triumph. It is a mobile surface to air, you know, uh, surface to air missile defense system. Uh, belonging to Russia and which is capable to engage any airborne threat. Uh, no, it can engage aircrafts, UAVs, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, etc. Maybe you can add one line to uh, show its strength. Like uh, uh, economist has told that S-400 is one of the most potent uh, air defense systems available in the market. That point may be added to show how powerful it is. Okay. Now, the question, if you come to across the question, the question is not asking about S-400 assets. The question is asking how S-400 air defense system is technically superior to any other systems presently available in the world. So this comparison has to be made with respect to, uh, with respect to other systems. So the major air defense systems in the world, one is S-400 belonging to Russia and the rest, second one is TARD, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System belonging to US or there is a Patriot air defense system belonging to US. You can compare, uh, you know, this S-400 with these two systems or any one of these systems. Now, the point is here, you should explain how it is technically superior. So one point I already told you that this uh, S-400 is a missile defense system capable to engage any airborne threat. Okay. Whereas TARD or Terminal High Altitude Air Defense System is exclusively an anti-ballistic system. It does not have anti-aircraft capability. It cannot attack aircrafts or it does not have the uh, capacity to target any aerial threat, only ballistic missiles. So this is one point. So, uh, you know, uh, you can um, you can compare. Now, the next heading, you be better uh, can just write the heading from the question itself. The technical superiority of uh, S-400, that can be your heading, technical superiority. And uh, um, in technical superiority, you can start, right, first point can be, it can take any airborne threat. Any airborne threat. Then the range. So S-400, uh, the range is 400 kilometers. Okay, 400 kilometers. It can intercept. Uh, you know, targets even at 600 kilometers. It can intercept target even at 600 kilometers. It can attack strike at 400 kilometers. And uh, this this is the range. Whereas if you compare it with uh, TARD, TARD maximum range is 150 to 200 kilometers. This is another area you can compare the range of uh, S-400 is high 400 kilometers. And uh, again, because of this high you know, interception is possible at 600 kilometers, it is capable to attack. You now, even in the transition phase itself, even in the transition phase of the missile itself, the uh, enemy missile, we can we are able to attack it. Whereas in the case of uh, TARD and all, the interception is mostly happening in the re-entry phase or the striking phase. This is another point at which phase does the interception happens. 
then uh, you can uh, write about how the attack is done so uh, s400 can simultaneously engage 72 targets right the number of targets s400 can simultaneously engage 72 targets whereas tard is a single layer defense see it is a one dimensional missile system which can fire only one type of missile this is another another uh, feature of another comparison uh, the attack the attack mode the difference between the attack mode and uh, you know uh, tard i told you uh, it can it is a one dimensional missile system which can fly only one type of missile then you can maybe mention about the guidance system the guidance system available in s400 it is an active radar homing so active radar homing system is there for guidance whereas in tard it is an infrared seeker head so the guidance system is superior in s400 even you can mention about the speed you can compare the speed speed of s400 is 14 mac whereas for tard it is hard 8 mac around 8 mac and then the features like um, s400 as a multi function radar it has autonomous detection system it has autonomous targeting system all these are superiority of s400 and um, see all this is a 10 marker if you i think um, in multiple areas if you if you compare and if you tell the superiority of uh, s400 uh, that itself will be sufficing i guess and then in the conclu conclusion you can maybe write about how india is uh, purchasing s400 from russia and we have already deployed uh, the s 400s we got in the punjab sector right so which will help us in countering threats from pakistan and china this point you can write in the uh, s 400 question right so this is the first question now if we come to the uh, second question so second question was a 15 marker and it was from uh, biotechnology so what are the research and development achievements in applied biotechnology how will these achievements help to uplift the poorer sections of society. So two parts are there. First, they are asking what are the research and development activities in applied biotechnology and how it will help the poor section. That is the second part. So obviously, uh, we can start by defining what is applied biotechnology from the term itself, if you, even if you have not heard about applied biotechnology. So what will be applied biotechnology? Biotechnology with emphasis on the practical sites, practical skills or biotechnology with its industrial focus. We are applying biotechnology. That is called applied biotechnology. So applied biotechnology can be used you know, in different areas, like applied, where all we can use applied biotechnology. So we can use it in industry. We can use it in food sector, agriculture, right? environmental aspects. We can use it in healthcare. Try to include as many dimensions as possible. So define what is uh, applied biotechnology in the introduction. Uh, it is a biotechnology is the industry phase. It emphasizes on the practical skills, etc. I can define it. Now, second part of the question, like this is the introduction. First part of the question is asking. Uh, first part of the question is asking how, uh, what are the research and development achievements in applied biotechnology? So focus on the research. Again, try to incorporate as many diverse areas as possible in research and development achievements. So maybe you can uh, start with the most uh, obvious ones like, uh, you know, uh, research, research, gene, genetic research is happening in the biotechnology area. So genetic research, we can uh, mention the different areas of genetic research like human genome project, which is going on. The most obvious ones you should write first. That is the uh, best part. Uh, you know, the best thing to do because even the examiner will be familiar with the most obvious uh, point. So write all these points. So we have human genome project, which is, uh, which we are using to determine the sequence of uh, nucleotide base pairs that makes our human DNA. And, uh, you know, we have uh, um, HGP write, HGP read uh, projects are going on. So it will help us to identify the genes especially that causes diseases. Once we are doing uh, this HGB project will help in that. Then it is helping us in uh, stem cell therapy, another application, stem cell therapy. So stem cells can be programmed uh, you know, in such a way that they can regenerate into any specific type of cells in the body. So stem cell can maybe grow into de degenerative spine cells or any cells it can you know, uh, pro uh, regenerate into any any kind of cells so you can uh, mention stem cell therapy where it is used etc and uh, you can mention about maybe um, recombinant uh, dna techniques 
recombinant DNA techniques, no, which is used to produce uh, insulin, another application. Then we can mention about uh, you know diagnosis of disease, which is done uh, like RT-PCR test. It is a genetic amplification of the virus. RT-PCR test. So diagnosis of disease. Then uh, we can mention about uh, you know vaccines, COVID vaccine, the mRNA technology, messenger RNA technology, which is used in vaccines. You no, know, multiple areas, multiple research development. You can mention. Then you can mention about uh, agriculture, genetically modified crops. So GM crops, which are pest resistant, it, which will improve the crop yield, higher nutritional value. We can mention about uh, maybe waste management techniques like phyto remediation. This used in waste management. Uh, we can mention about uh, 3D printed organs again, uh, which is used uh, helpful in um, health sector. So these all things can be mentioned as the uh, what we say first part R and D. What are the research and development achievements in biotechnology? You mention as many uh, points as possible, as many diverse areas as possible. Then you know even we can mention the Indian initiatives in the R and D achievements in biotechnology. It need not be just international achievements. India has, uh, you know, different areas where India is using, uh, India is focusing on R&D. Like we have a Unnati Atal J Anusanthan Mission. So Department of Biotechnology has an Unnati Atal J Anusanthan Mission under which we are focusing on improved agriculture multiple areas we are focusing improved agriculture affordable health care affordable health care clean energy cutting edge frontier science etc using biotechnology again give some specific applications like we have a scheme called garb me, Garpini, which study as uh, uh, no, uh, to or which aims to discover the molecular risk markers uh, and generate a risk prediction algorithm in terms of pre uh, term birth. So, this Garpini is uh, aiming to study uh, to discover the molecular risk markers and generate risk prediction algorithms for pre term babies. We have an antimicrobial resistance mission, AMR mission. Uh, which is trying to develop new antibiotics, alternative anti alternative to antibiotics diagnostics. Then uh, there is a Unnati mission, clean technology for Swachh Bharat. There is a mission for Swachh Bharat. Swachh Bharat. So in this we have uh, techniques like uh, biomethanation, bio toilets chemical and you know membrane free water purification all this there is in, there is in unnati mission clean technology for swachh bharat then we have uh, fortified wheat uh, nutrition improvement so we have fortified wheat wheat nutritional improvement Another area where India is uh, doing research in biotechnology. So there is anthocyanin rich biofortified color wheat. You now we have developed anthocyanin rich biofortified color wheat. So this is another area where India is doing research in wheat uh, nutrition improvement. All these are different examples. Now the second part of the question is, this is the first part. So now give the next heading, how this achievement is helping to lift the poorer sections. So link it, this applications with the poorer section. So we can start with the last application, wheat nutritional improvement. This is helping to address the micronutrient malnutrition, obviously, which is helping the poorer sections. Then the scheme, which I, which we mentioned, Garbhini, you know, it is trying to save uh, children's life and reduce morbidities especially uh, this uh, preterm babies is common when we are underweight or overweight and underweight is a problem which is prevalent mostly in poorer sections so preterm babies uh, how to de how to reduce their mortality etc then in biotechnology we are using sorry medicines medicines field biotechnology used in medicines field 
will reduce the healthcare expenditure like uh, you know uh, cost of medicines have come down because of the research which is going on in the uh, medical field gm crops whatever applications we mentioned link it with the poorer sections gm crops so gm crops can address uh, many issues faced by the farmers like uh, it will increase yield it will reduce losses productivity so farmers uh, problems can be solved we have a biotech kisan scheme where scientist uh, farmer partnership is uh, man- maintained for agriculture innovation another area where uh, biotechnology is used to help the farmers then it can reduce pollution because it is used in sweat spots etc bio remediation can help to uh, clean landfills around slums techniques like bio remediation again helping poor you know it will help to um, uh, clear bio uh, landfills around slums then uh, it will help to convert waste into assets like bio composting waste can be converted into valuable fertilizer another example so all these are different um, examples of how biotechnology is helping the poor section so connect whatever applications you have mentioned or whatever research and uh, development we have mentioned that can be linked with the poor section connected with poor sections and multiple points uh, you know it is a 250 marker so you can write approximately um, two and a half pages can be written in this so this is the second question the third question is regarding blue led so the nobel prize in physics of 2014 was uh, jointly awarded to akasaki amano and nakamura for the invention of blue leds in the 1990s how was this invention impacted how the invention has impacted the everyday life of human beings so again uh, you will be uh, you know the like upsc is asking 2014 nobel prize etc the question is not really regarding the nobel prize the question is regarding blue led or led how blue led has invented the or impacted everyday life so even if you have no idea about uh, what got the nobel prize if you have idea about leds its application you can actually decently answer this uh, question of nobel prize so if you know the context of what they have mentioned you can mention that why they won the nobel prize etc so again um, introduced by writing about blue led so till the invention of blue led leds were monochromatic like they were sing- single colors we had red red led we had green led but we did not have uh, a white led because to make a white led we needed red green and blue so blue led was not available and because blue led was not available uh, we could not make a white led so till the discovery of blue led uh, leds were monochromatic and we could not come up with a white led and once blue led was discovered or sorry once blue led was invented no we could actually make white led possible this is one major thing which you can write in the introduction itself we can mention this now why they won the nobel prize or for what they won the nobel prize obviously blue led was last to be invented because of the difficulty in producing blue led we required uh, the material to uh, make blue led was gallium nitrate so uh, this both um, akasaki amano and nakamura worked on producing high quality gallium nitride so this is why they won the nobel prize right so they won the nobel prize for producing high quality gallium nitride so it is a chemical that appears in the appears in many layers of blue led and green and red led actually uses gallium phosphide okay this is easy to produce that is why uh, we had uh, both uh, blue and green leds earlier itself but we made gra- uh, ga- we uh, this people uh, akasaki amano and nakamura actually produced high quality gallium nitride that is why they were given nobel prize if you know the context you can write it but the question is actually not asking about uh, you know why they won the nobel prize if you can know if you write it obviously you will get more marks but even if you don't know how the invention has impacted the everyday life of human beings so as i told invention of blue led ultimately led to the uh, white led so you can write uh, the impact in maybe two ways first maybe you can write the advantages of led right that can be one point and second you can mention the applications wherever we where all we are using this led that can be mentioned i think these are the two aspects which you can focus on while writing the Uh, day-to-day impact of LED. So obviously, first point in advantages, most common point will be LED is energy efficient. 
okay as compared to incandescent bulb they are 90 they consume 90% less power so first point can be day to day life it is how it is affecting you know so decrease in the power cost so it is 90% it consumes 90% less power so less consumption of power means lesser emissions of carbon dioxide less than carbon food carbon footprint so less power consumption less uh, less environmental pollution these are all affect you know affecting the day to day life third they are long lasting third point or second point itself we can write they are long lasting the life of a uh, led is approximately 1 lakh hours so obviously when the life is more their replenishment replacement cost maintenance cost etc will come down and they do not the, the buying uh, you know the buying the gap between two purchases will increase so it will reduce the usage of raw materials wastage which is happening during production all those can be reduced then uh, you know uh, leds will function fourth or fifth point you can write leds can function with low voltage so it can be used in rural areas with lower voltage Uh, then you can mention about um, leds being used in areas where there is no power because leds there are leds which work on battery or charging so we can use them in areas where there is no power so some of the advantages of leds can be mentioned then you can write where all it is being applied so obviously it is a one of the most uh, common company near the digital screens because of the high contrast we have organic leds was a prelims question of upsc itself so they uh, organic led because of the flexibility in shaping screens and it is uh, used in uh, wearable devices smartphones etc organic leds then it is an important component of the backlighting of our smartphones tv etc backlighting is mainly from led uh, it can be used in uh, automobiles lighting in automobiles it can be uh, you know it, it is used in data transfer no light lifi technology light fidelity wireless visible light communication vlc technique is using um uh, no the light is coming from led because of the high flickering we are using led bulbs even in therapeutic treatments we are using led so right different applications different area in alarm security systems we are using leds uh, no multiple applications if you use mention that will address the second part of the question how it is affecting day to day life and again in the conclusion maybe you can write about how what is india doing in the uh, led uh, led technology so india has just launched our national led program uh, you know which will facilitate india's commitments towards our paris a- uh, agreement paris agreement we have read we have uh, agreed in our indc nationally determined contribution we have uh, committed that will reduce the emission intensity per capita per unit of gdp by 33 to 35 percentage by 2030 so by increasing the led consumption our uh, we, our commitment to paris climate deal can be increased. so we can link it with what india how india is exactly benefiting from this uh, led program that can also be mentioned so that is how leds impact everyday life of human beings so see one final point uh, i want to mention regarding uh, this years means and upcoming years those who are listening so see there are exactly nine topics which upsc mentions in the science and technology syllabus so first is everyday application of science and technology in uh, daily life or application of science and technology in daily life so this year last year they directly asked what is the application of science and technology in everyday life and then one more question was regarding covid how technology help in dealing with covid so this year they asked about blue led and how blue led led is affecting the everyday life of humans second topic is um, contributions of indians in science and technology so be prepared uh, so i think 2019 was the last year where they asked about contributions of indians in science and technology so in the coming years you should be prepared on contributions of indians third topic is indigenization what india is doing in different areas biotechnology nanotechnology space nuclear technology defense different area how we are indigenizing how we are you know making in india atmanirbhar bharat what is happening in all sectors of science you should be aware you should know then the uh, fourth topic is awareness in five areas which are the five areas space biotechnology nanotechnology then information communication technology ict will clip together robotics five area so robotics also i think 2015 was the last time they asked a question so coming years you should be prepared on robotics and ict is one area which they have majorly ignored in the last few years so in future we should be prepared on questions on ict on one area from which uh, questions are expected biotechnology nanotechnology they keep on asking every alternate years once in three years oh yes questions keep coming about 
mainly application of uh, biotechnology nanotechnology what is biotechnology nanotechnology what india is doing in biotechnology nanotechnology all these things we should be prepared and space again every uh, two years every once in three years questions keep coming so last time at the question came in 2019 so 2020 21 no questions 22 we should be prepared on space what is isro doing nasa's missions all those things we should be prepared and then the last topic in science and technology is uh, challenges in IPR. So in uh, intellectual property rights, especially pharmaceutical sector, what is happening? I think for two years, they have asked how we are uh, preserving traditional knowledge of medicine. So I think a similar question was asked in uh, just paper one this year, how tribal knowledge is uh, you know, conserved, something like that was asked in just paper one. And just paper one also, we had one question regarding cryptocurrency, which was expected in science and technology. They asked it in um just paper one and asked how it is impacting society and india so impact of globalization and here also when they asked the question the nobel prize they asked how it is impacting everyday life and then the question on biotechnology they asked how it is helping the poor right so a few years back also they asked about the missions of isr and how it is impacting how it is making socio-economic changes so this linkage of different topics like how science and technology is helping society. So whenever you are uh, studying about any topic in science and technology, so please try to link it with the uh, social applications, social, social implications. So concept of society 5.0, which uh, Japan has come out with, please uh, try to read more about it, which will help you out in you know linking more about technology, industry 4.0 and how it is linked with society. So that's all uh, regarding the examination. Uh, our discussion. Thank you and all the very best.